Let's build this homemade dust separator. It's got a couple of unique improvements. I think you'll enjoy. A common problem with homemade dust separators is that as the collector bucket fills, dust in the collector bucket is agitated and sucked up through the outflow pipe. A common mitigation is the inclusion of a baffle between the collector and separator buckets that reduces the airflow disturbance in the collector bucket. This project includes an additional innovation. The outflow pipe is designed in a way to reduce negative pressure at the outflow pipe. It also disperses the direction of flow into the outflow pipe. You'll see more about this later. Another design feature of this project is that the collector bucket is completely unmodified and removing the separator bucket is trivial. The first thing to do is begin preparing the separator bucket. Using a utility knife, trim off the top lip of the bucket, leaving at least a half inch of bucket wall until the next rib. Then, chamfer the outside edge to facilitate seating of the separator bucket inside of the top of the collector bucket. The top of the collector bucket will need to be modified to receive a connector for a two inch PVC pipe. Find a hole saw, slightly smaller than the radius needed, drill the hole, and file it to size. Trace the top and bottom of the bucket onto plywood to get the approximate size of the baffle and outflow support. We'll then trim those out using a jigsaw or a bandsaw. threw together a quick circle cutting jig for my table saw. Using that, we'll dial in a precise diameter for the baffle and for the outflow support. The baffle needs to fit with precision, but the outflow support has greater tolerances. Now that the PVC connector fits snugly into the hole in the top of the separator bucket with the outflow support installed, we'll move on to preparing the baffle. The Thien baffle, which is common for homemade dust separators, has an opening of 240 degrees and is connected to the bucket with the remaining 120 degrees. I've elected for a design that has three feet equally spaced that will help give rigidity and structure to the separator bucket. These three feet will also provide anchor points, which we will use to connect toggle clamps to help secure the separator bucket to the collector bucket. This is where the real innovation is in this design, the outflow pipe. The outflow pipe extends all the way from the outflow support to the baffle at the bottom of the separator bucket. Along the entire exposed face of the outflow pipe, half inch holes are drilled, 32 holes in total. This provides twice the area of a section of the outflow pipe. This also halves the pressure at each of those drilled holes. And because the holes are facing in various directions, it disperses the airflow into the outflow pipe. In this dry fit, there's only 20 holes. I go back later and add the additional 12, as you will see. Next, we'll build the inflow box.
So I've attached the inlet connection to the separator bucket with a couple of screws. And that allows me to stick this pipe that's been shaped in here. We shine a light in one side and it illuminates inside of the bucket where material needs to be removed. So here you can see the rough size of that opening that needs to be cut out. I took a sharpie and kind of just highlighted that, uh, I, I traced out that highlighted area. So I put the inlet back on. I was able to trace from the inside through the hole the, uh, a little bit more accurately than I cut out. And I was able to file this part here I couldn't trace because it got a little too close. So I was able to kind of cut it out with a utility knife and file that to be where I need it to be. So with that, let's cut this out. All right, let's clean that up with the file and we'll be good to go. All the individual parts are complete and now we just have to put it together. After cutting away a little bit of the plastic rim, I'm installing these, these toggle clamps. Um, it's a great way of securing the collector bucket and the separator bucket. Uh, the, fix, the friction fit should be enough, um, but if you're going to be putting this on a cart and pulling it around with a hose, uh, having a more secure connection is a good thing here. So, um, If you don't use toggle clamps, uh, you can just put a screw into each, the one foot of each of the, uh, uh, the legs of the baffles. I ran that sawdust through the vacuum in the dust separator three times. Let's see what it looks like in the shop vac. Pretty clean. If you enjoy approachable woodworking videos, please consider subscribing to our channel. You won't miss future content, and it really helps us out. We appreciate it. The project article is always available on jeffreydking.com. It's linked out in the description, along with the materials list and the tools list required for this project. Thank you very much for watching.